Good morning, people. How's everybody doing? Um, today, we are going to do methods and techniques. Then I got uh, this book I got to show you, which I think I showed you before, but I want to show you again because it's a very good book. And uh, actually, let me look for it right now. It's an old book. I had it for a very long time. And let me see if I can show you this vertically. Um, and we're going to do, after I show you this book, I want to work with you guys with some more techniques that I've been practicing by um, David Finch and Abdin J. Romero. And let me just fix this a little bit because it looks like this um, phone holder is not budging at all. So it's just like, and I don't want to bend it too much because it might break and that's all I need. Just bend it. Yeah, there you go. Now it's, I think this is good. Yeah. Nice and vertically. Unfortunately, I can't show you horizontally because I don't, the other phone holder doesn't um, work on this table so this one is a little better but the only problem is it's going to actually um, do everything vertically all right so let's get started um this one is called the complete guide to figure drawing for comics and graphic arts and it's by uh, a known i think he's a known artist i'm not really sure but I think he worked for like maybe magazines and probably newspapers. I'm not really sure. His name is Daniel Cooney. And um, let me see. Let me read a little bit of him here. Okay, right here it says it. Daniel Cooney is the creator and illustrator of the Assassin series, Valentine, and the uh, author of writing and illustrating the graphic novel published in the North America by Barron's. He, is all, he, he also teaches graphic novel writing courses at the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. So this guy's a professional <clears throat> and he uh, actually dedicated this book for all of you guys that want to learn about comics. And this Let's uh, take a peek at the book, which I've already seen it like probably several times, but I want to show you guys probably this is going to be the second time I show you this book, but it doesn't matter. It's, as long as I show you two times, that's fine. You know, it's so you get an idea what this book is all about. It's pretty much like every other book, like all the tools that you need to get pencils, pens and all that. And speaking of pencils and I've got my I got me a second one, the pencil eraser. I managed to find one. I went to the art store this week, but I was so stupid I forgot to buy the black pencil. But I did get this type of pencil that's really good. I got like four of them I think, and it's a uh, Castell. It's a very good pencil. I actually recommend it. it's a two B, <clears throat> and it's really nice and dark. So. We're going to be using that today. And like every other book, I'll show you how to do uh, inking, how to use cameras, digital cameras. Uh, here we have uh, the template. Uh, yeah, yeah, templates of oval shapes and um, I would say more like ellipse circles. As a French curve. Oh, you know, the works, everything, even including the T square, rulers, triangles, everything you need to do comics. And then it tells you a computer, scanner, printer. Speaking of computers, uh, I saw this fantastic light box, but it costs like $300 to buy. I said to myself, oh my God, it's so expensive. 
but they said they're going to have another one that's like probably the same size that I usually work with. It's a light box. It costs like a hundred something. So I might settle for the smaller one. I do would love to get the bigger one, but it's too expensive. It's like $300. And the light box is very needful because you can actually correct your, oh, your mistake with the light box and just put the, um, the new paper on top. But since I'm working with small paper, I'm actually going to probably get the small light box, which is going to cost me like a hundred something. So hopefully I'll get it next week. So <clears throat> right here, um, this book actually explains pretty much about modeling, life drawing, and it's always important, you know, you should actually ask uh, maybe a friend of yours or somebody that you know that might pose for you. And uh, it's good practice, you know, especially when you're using references. Oh my God, I forgot to put my aloe vera pineapple drink in the refrigerator. Give me a minute, guys. Okay, so let's keep turning the pages. And let me use this so that way I can point out some things here. And here we have um, building a reference library. You know, try to like make a, like, you know, on your wall pinups of reference, which is a really good idea. I know if I would have had my own place, my own room, oh my God, I would, my apartment would be like an art studio, definitely. But unfortunately, I don't have my own um, apartment, so. But yeah, I would do stuff like this. This is awesome. And then of course, um, hang some of my artwork on the walls, I guess. Here we have constructing the head, and this is a little different. This is sort of like a, a circle and then you use sort of like an oval, an ellipse in the center, and then you actually do the um, construction lines, but with little tiny segments of where the features are gonna go, so. And this is the finished process right here. Here we have the profile, and it's very similar to the, the Loomis kind of, except it doesn't have the, the plane in the center of the, oh, the, the circle, so. This one actually works differently. It's like, it's kind of like um, David Finch would probably do, but David Finch, is, his method is a little bit different, which I actually dotted it down and I took notes and I will share some cool stuff by David Finch. <clears throat> this is a good technique also. Um, this kind of reminds me of the technique from that fantasy book that I have by this uh, fantasy artist. He's really good. And uh, it's very, very similar, the method and stuff. So this one is like you actually start out with a circle and you do a jaw shape, you see? Sort of like a U shape, but sort of like a jaw, see? And then right here, you start working with the planes of the side of the head over here. And then after that, you work with the eyes and then you do the planes of the eyes and the eyebrows. So little by little, your whole face starts taking shape like this, you see? This is a good way in how to do a back view of a, a three-quarter view, because I said, yeah, this is a three-quarter view. And it shows you different uh, sketches here, drawings here. I did this because like always, you know, this is an old book, guys. So if you see any markings or drawings on it, Nothing messy, it's just I like to practice on my books, but that was way, way back, but I don't do that anymore. Usually the new books that I get now, I actually keep it nice and clean. 
this is a very good uh, <clears throat> way of doing it, pretty much like the Loomis method, you know, kind of, except it's sort of like an oval. And uh, you can tell that, um, you know, the, the, the direction of the curving of the construction lines, you see? There's a curve, and it's actually, she's looking up, and then you see the planes on the side of her face right here, see? Here we have more drawings right here, more sketches. And this girl right here, she's looking down, that's this over here. Okay, eyes and brows and details. And this is like step-by-step -step segments of how to do the eyes, you see? Here we have more eyes. More eyes. But this one is uh, like the original circle uh, technique. You can actually draw the eye on top of the circle. But notice that he uses sort of like grid lines on the circle, you see. And pretty much I've shown you guys how to do this. Except that I don't use too many lines. I'll just use one line for the center of the eye. And that's how the way I do it. Let me drink something. My voice is going. Okay. So <clears throat> we have expressions right here, see? Expressive eyebrows with expressions because it's actually giving you expressions but with eyebrows. Ears and details. We have the upshot ear, upshot. The side view ear, the back view ear, the front view ear, the three-quarter view ear, the three-quarter view view front, and the down shot back, and the down shot, yeah, down, down shot front view. And this is how you do an ear, see? Little by little. Well, every artist has a different way of doing ears. So you're gonna notice everybody draw the ears a little bit similar to everybody else, you see? So we all gotta understand that inside the ear, there's sort of like shapes and it's the same shapes and never changes. Now, some artists, you know, they'll do the same shapes and everything for the ear, but they'll do it in a different way. They might start from the bottom. Some artists start from the top. I usually start from the top work my way down and do this ear lobe right here and then work with a little oval over here like you see over here so everybody works differently now I'm not very good doing ears uh, it's like a mission it's a real mission doing ears here we have the nose nose in detail and pretty much I've shown you um, you can start with a triangle or sort of like a pyramid shape or you can use a cone shape. But if I were you guys, I would practice doing pyramid shapes or triangle shapes. Um, you could do the cone sh shape, but it's a lot of practice. Um, and this is the uh, profile nose right here. Here we have another profile nose. And here we have some cool cartoons or characters, I would say more like comic characters on the profile and we got more noses here placing the nose on the face you have the segments right here and we got more noses and details always remember that a, the bottom of the nose is going to be dark okay always remember that and over here too this dark here and it's usually cast shadow let's cast shadow here in the corner of the nose here all the way down and then the profile nose, you got different types of nose, exaggerated noses. You got this nose here. You got this nose pointing all the way down. And this nose, nose is pointing down, but straight out, you see? And this one is like really crooked, like really falling down. So there's so many types of noses here. Okay, we have the mouth and chin in detail. And 
I know I did this line here to figure out the length of the, uh, the lip, but you can do it that way. But always remember that you have to do the proportions of the lip correctly done. <clears throat> this is a good way, but I would actually consider you watching the way Romero actually draw the lips. It's way better. And Robert Marzullo draws some pretty good lips too. Here we have the profile right here, see? And uh, it's two different types of profiles. You have the chin coming up. And uh, the nose looks a little bit different. I think the nose is the same, kind of. It's just this over here where the chin area is really different right here. Let me uh, see if you can see that. Yeah. Okay, so, because I got to remember, is this has to look vertically. And you can tell here the chin is like really going in. So it's a different type of face here. There's a lot of um, fat underneath the, uh, the chin right here. And this is a re like a regular average character with a crooked nose and the chin comes out more. And we got facial expressions over here. And this time is the whole face. And like I've mentioned before many times, you could just doodle dummy drawings of different expressions on on ovals like this, you see? Practice doing this. Then after that, you get to the real stuff right here, see? This is this right here. Everything takes practice, guys. Here we have expressions on a profile right here, see? There's an expression right here. Great expressions. And we got more expressions over here. Let me get this out of here. Because I'm, I'm going to end up ripping up a page by mistake. And that's my construction paper. So we got more expressions over here. Let me double... Let me double... Uh, Show you this one just in case if you didn't see this one all right this one this is the second page and you know whenever i look at this drawing she looks just like penelope cruz look at that the same eyes and the same lips exactly like penelope cruz i wouldn't be surprised if he even drew her or maybe he copied a and the same hairstyle because penelope cruz is like very she has that very passionate hairstyle that comes out like that in waves. And I gotta tell you, Penelope Cruz is a very beautiful Spaniard woman. And then we got more faces over here with hair. And we got more faces here. And the youth and age, drawing kids. Drawing children, babies. And now we go to the elderly, adding age to a woman, adding age to a man. And here's a three quarter view of an older woman and a profile of an older man, see? drawing the figure okay now when I look at this this kind of reminds me how Romero does his figures and we're gonna work with that today with um, some figures some techniques that I've been observing we have the basics of the muscles here the proportions man and woman and what's good about this, that'll show you real people, right? And then it'll show you the drawing of these real people, see? Sort of like comic book style. Like this guy is into a comic book style. This guy is sort of like a comic book uh, style. And this one also, and this one also. So I gotta admit, this artist is really, really good. You know, he draws fantastic figure file types of female figure. This is an excellent pose. 
And very sexy too. This one too. This is more like a muscle lady. But I like this one better. It looks more feminine, see? And of course, you definitely need to draw, you know, some superhero women are feminine looking. Some superhero women are very heroic and muscles like this, you know? So, you know, it depends on the character that you're actually drawing. You could draw Phoenix and Phoenix looks something like this, you see? Or like this. Or Sue from the Fantastic Four would be most likely something like this. Now, if you want to draw like the She-Hulk, it would be something like that. So yeah, it's got all kinds of um, segments here to study. It's a very good book. I actually recommend it. Here's a good technique how to draw the figure. It mostly is constructing the running figure right here. <clears throat> you can tell the balance line right here and the oval circle, the lines, pretty much like um, Romero does. Just a little bit slightly different though. But if you look at it, it kind of reminds you of Romero. Here we have the action and character constructing and kneeling f uh, figure. Break it down and this pose is this pose right here. Now, I would guess that this artist um, probably did something like this, which I'm going to show you right now. Let me see if I can find another, an extra paper here so I can show you this. Let me put this away. So this one right here, he probably, you know, started out with the head since it's coming at us. And here's the oval. And then he did another circle for the pelvic, which is the hip area. Then he did lines for the legs and this line also for the other leg there. And then this other arm here and this other arm here and you know it's always important to um study your pose you know like you see i did the head too grudged in so i gotta bring it out a little bit this will be the center line of my eye line so my greatest guess that he probably did what romero does he starts bringing it out inserting out the shape right then he does a cylinder you can see it right here see there's a cylinder right there again with this one he's sort of like straighten it out because it's, he's actually this one is sort of like foreshortened of course and this one is kind of coming out this way and then notice that he did a cylinder shape right there so there's a cylinder right there, see? Cylinder there. And then you don't see a cylinder here, just a, a line there. But there's always boundaries that you could actually change and make more cylinders just to give it a nice three dimension. Remember the cylinders and the spiral technique, it's what's going to give your figure three dimensional, 3D look. Okay, so here's the arm. And the other arm this way. Right there, see? So you could do it that way. It actually works out pretty well. Okay, this is also another segment right here. This is a great pose right here. And this is also a great pose. Now to do a pose like that, I would probably start off with the center line, of course. You do sort of like an oval shape for her body. Not an oval shape, more like a beam shape. This would be the balance line here. I would probably like that. Then, to get that, that buttocks look right there, so I would probably start doing um, circle shapes. 
and then bring this out a little bit more and then if I want I could just make a line and then just do insert the shape of her leg this other leg coming this way and then of course she's got curve here her leg is it's going to show on the other side right here see and I'm going to make it a little bit darker and her arm I have to actually visualize the spine she has a spine right there see and then her breast and her arm we want to make sure we capture everything especially when you're doing reference her arm is going up and her hand is sort of like coming out this way let me make sure it doesn't mess up right there it doesn't mess up right here okay then part of her chin comes up so let's finish her body and then her shorts or something around there and it comes in this way and let's color it in and then her half of her bra sort of like opens up here so it looks a little bit like the drawing and the reason why I like this drawing because it looks so realistic the way he drew that especially this one right here the lady walking with the briefcase awesome drawing looks like the dogs woke up okay there you go I'm not going to do the faces from this book because it's something different and um, maybe I might go back and show you something but um, I'd rather just show you the stuff that I've been actually um, observing from Romero and taking notes. So you can see there's different poses here that you could actually draw from reference if you want. The limbs and details you see. Sort of like cylinder shapes. And remember, you don't want to draw the legs flat. You want to taper in the legs. You see how it's tapered in? That's what you call a leg cylinder leg. See? It's tapered in. Especially the arms right here is tapered in. And here is tapered in. And when I'm saying tapered in, because many of you probably don't understand what tapered in, especially a lot of people from other countries are probably watching this video. Well, taper in means that you're actually you know bringing in the shape a little bit just to make that general leg shape right there see here's the joint some people use like an oval and then they'll do taper in like that sometimes you know i do that sometimes but always remember that you have to tape taper in the shape of the leg it's very very important here's the cylinder right here and notice that it's going in a different direction here, in a different direction here. And there's a cylinder right here, cylinder right here. And of course, this is a cylinder, but shaped like a underwear, you see? So there's a lot of ways that you can form cylinders. Sometimes, you know, there are cylinders, you know, there are actually comics, uh, you know, cartoonists actually draw sort of like an underwear shape like that and then they bring out the legs you know if you want sometimes they'll do circle you know the the oval for the chest and an oval for the hip area then they'll do an underwear shape you see something like that there's another book I need to show you guys that has some great methods how to draw the figure and it's by um steve miller and some other artists i think is john bow i'm not really sure 
but I will show you that book uh, possibly this week. And it's a little bit different. It's about drawing fantasy and drawing animals, the sort of like humanoid animals. So you probably might like that book. I got it like way, way back. <clears throat> And here we have uh, feet and detail. And we got, you can tell the tendons right here. Here we got more feet. And like I said, there's so many ways, excuse me. Oh, oh I feel tired. <clears throat> excuse me about that, guys. Okay, uh, hands in detail. And then we got more hands over here. And we got another segment here to draw the hands. Some people actually do stuff like this. And there's two segments for the whole hand right here. And we have this technique also. People use this. They store, sort of like start out the shape of the hand. Then they do these dots to uh, connect the fingers and the rest of the hand. So that's a pretty neat trick. In size, the hand reaches from the chin to the hairline, see? <clears throat> okay, they're talking about the fingers and the thumb each have three points. Yeah, it's like one, two, three. One, two, three. That's pretty much what they're showing you right here. See? One, two, three. One, two, three. So it would start here. One, two, and three. So that's what they're showing you right here. See? Okay. Yeah. I started drinking that aloe vera and it's kind of sticky. So I wash my hands for a second. It's amazing, it's so quiet. And I think I know why. I think the, the people in the back, they're probably on vacation or something. I'm not really sure, but I know I haven't seen them from yesterday and today, so. Or maybe they're still sleeping, I don't know. So that's why I'm actually talking low, because if they wake up, then the dog is gonna start barking really loud. So we have more hands here, see? So it's always good to actually copy your own hand, you know, draw your own hand, practice by drawing your own hand. <clears throat> okay, drawing the closing. All right, so I'm gonna show you the other half of this book later on because I wanna continue with the techniques, okay? So remember, the book is called The Complete Guide to Figure Drawing for Comics and Graphic Novels by Daniel Cooney. Get this book. I actually give this book a 10. And trust me, when I give a book a 10, it's because the book is good. All right, so that's my rating for this book. Okay, so let's start with some cool, cool techniques here. All right, this is something that I actually took notes from David Finch's video. And uh, I actually posted some great videos from David Finch on my group, if you guys want to see it. And for newbies, for those people that are new, you can actually join my group. I actually posted on the community, um, on my library, so check it out. All right, so this is a cool technique. You start off sort of like, like, sort of like a skull method. Like you start out with the sockets, one and two. You could start here first and then do here. So really, as long as you get the proportions right, remember that this socket is a little bit closer. So I didn't do that too good. Well, actually, this is just the method. And then this one comes out a little further out. Another way to figure this out, you could do the temple also and indicate the socket. So after you do that, then you do the planes, the shape of the skull because the planes could be including the shape of the skull, like the cheek of the skull right here, see? 
after you do this segment right here you do this and over here is a little bit different you start off you do the oval course with the grid lines for the features of course but then you start with the cheek line which is like always the plane of the cheek and then the plane over here so this is supposed to be number two as this, this one is sort of like making sort of like a box shape you can use the oval and use a box shape and then from there on all you have to do is work with the planes like this you see then bring this one in like that you can start here first and then go here but make sure you have sort of like a box shape right there and very simple all you have to do is visualize your eyes are going to be trained train your eye to look at every single segment okay right here would be the other eye this is the other eye here make sure that this eye is close to the vertical line so this method actually works out really good so this one is almost similar very similar so this one is a little bit different from this one so you start here with the cheek lines the plane of the temple of the forehead which this is really the other side of the face okay so then you start working with the eye sockets number three and number four see this is this right here this is the beginning process and then you work with this okay so here's an, the same method that i use for this one on the top i used it over here but i actually used a circle instead sort of like the loomis method after that of course i have to remember remember that the the shape of the circle you have to sort of like slice in and then bring in the shape so let's do this one let me get some paper you can start working with this one so let's do this one right here and let's see if we can show this vertically perfect okay all righty all right so we're gonna do a circle like always to do the shape of the head of course and then i'm going to visualize the eyebrow line then the nose line should be around here then the chin line should be around here then my center line i visualize a cross just like romero explains as a sort of like cross from there on i'm going to do the vertical line a little bit curved because the face is a little bit round a little bit especially in the center this center line kind of like you don't want to exaggerate it too much but something like this okay so make sure it flows okay and romero actually explains that a lot okay so now i'm going to do instead of working with this side i'm going to visualize the eye socket where the eye goes in the eye socket that's why i call it the eye socket then i'm going to leave a space here and then right here would be my other eye socket okay this would be the opening of the nose of the skull right there then i'm going to start doing the mouth segment here and then i could start working with this cheek over here and then this cheek over here which is actually the planes bring it out and then right here would be the temple okay see how little by little is actually taking form and then of course i'm gonna actually analyze this real good and of course there's too many lines here so i'm gonna have to erase some of these lines from the circle in order to see that ear line otherwise my drawing is going to come out bad so the ear line should be around here i'm going to taper in all the way to the chin see then i'm going to of course the the circle has to be sliced just a little just a little piece you see this is part of the circle and you're going to slice here then we're going to make the hairline here 
and it will make the shape of the skull on the side of the face. And then I'm not gonna do like the, the muzzle of the skeleton because I'm trying, I'm, I'm gonna actually transfer this, transform this, sorry, oh my Lord. I'm gonna transform this into a face. And here's the chin right there, see? And here's the mouth and then the chin. So the chin would be sort of like a little circle there. And then once I have all this little by little, I could start working, you know, with the features, the eyes, and then the bridge of the nose, all the way down. Of course, you're gonna have to, and it would be better if I had a light box. This would be the nose right here. Then right here, actually I did that too high because of the, wait a minute, all right, there you go, okay, now that's better. Then the mouth would be around here. I could use the oval shape to make that mouth right there. Do the eye right here, the other eye here. So you can use the skull method to draw faces. You just gotta know how to do it and how to figure everything where everything takes place, where everything actually takes form, everything. And also you gotta remember the cast shadows to make your face three-dimensional. It's always important to remember that, okay? Okay, so we got that, now let's do this one right here, let's uh, do it right here I guess. So this one, we're not going to use the uh, circle, we're just going to use a regular oval shaped like a head, sort of like an egg shape. And where I'm going to do is, how can we see them? the eye? brow line would be around here, the nose would be here, and always remember it's three parts that you're actually cutting it into, okay? Here's the hairline right here. So now I'm going to visualize my center line, which is a vertical line, that would be the center of my face. And now I'm going to do the box shape right here. And then I can start working uh, another line here, then the mouth line right here. Then I'm going to start working with the contour, the planes on this side of the head. See? To the chin right there. Then to this side. See how it's actually taking form, the face? And the box shape really actually helps. There's so many ways of drawing a three-quarter view, people. It's just incredible. And this one was from Romero, but I actually changed it a little bit. Actually, no, not from Romero, from David Finch, sorry. But see, David Finch confuses you sometimes because he'll do, like, for example, a hint of the head like that, then he'll, he'll do a line like this, and then he'll do another line like this. And it's like, I don't know what it is. It's like he's sort of like, um, kind of confusing you in a way. I You know, trust me, I love him very much the way he draws. He's fantastic. But sometimes there are times that his techniques are a little bit complicating. So if he does it like this, it's better to do an oval egg shape. And all you got to do is the rest, just like he does. That's it. That's what I mean when I like to change the technique. And then we have the eye right there. This other eye closer to the vertical line. And see how the uh, face is actually taking form, see? We make the, um, the mouth a little, just a little slightly higher. 
the oval for the mouth, for the mu muzzle of the mouth, of course. And that's it. Little by little, your face starts shaping. Let me get the black, black pencil. Because it's going to help me better. Let's see. I have it here someplace. Oh, here it is. But it's turning small. Can you believe that? I need to get some more. Unfortunately, there's no art stores around here where I live at. So I got to go really far to an art store to get some art pencils and art equipment. So yeah, this is a very simple technique. It works. I kind of like the way it works, especially the box shape is very, very promising. And we got the mouth. Bottom of the lip. You gotta remember that this eye is closer to the vertical line because it's a three quarter view. You must remember that, my friends. Yeah, I'm gonna start because um, I've been watching a lot of British movies. Speaking about British movies, you guys gotta, you guys gotta see this hilarious movie oh my, i loved it and it's a movie my a friend of mine made it for me it's it's called kill uncle but it, it doesn't it's nothing bad it's just it's a funny movie in a way it has a sort of like a dark sense of humor uh and the movie was from the 60s so it's about these kids that they're in an island and then you know one of the kids his name is barnaby and then his uncle comes back from you know, the military and stuff. So his uncle is sort of like very, very military, very, you know, um, strict in a way. And then he scares Barnaby. But, but the problem is in the movie, um, he sort of like uh, trains him to be more of a, of a man and wise. But Barnaby, as a kid, he gets scared of his uncle. And plus, he's got this girlfriend that's in the island at the same time. So she convinces him that her, his uncle is trying to kill him. So it's really funny. The, I mean, the movie is hilarious. I really recommend you guys, if you like um, good classic movies, especially when it has to do with kids, it's a very good movie. It's called, I actually have it in my playlist. It's called Kill Uncle. And it's got these great um, actors. And one of my favorite actors, he's a British guy. I think his name is... Um, Norman Green, I think. I'm not really sure. And he was in... Um, in that movie by uh, Michael Caine. I think it was called The Cypress Hill. Yeah, The Cypress Hill. So, yeah, that movie was hilarious. You gotta see that. Alright, so now we can fix this one. Yeah, I enjoy very much all these British movies. Um, it's funny because he actually scares his son, his his nephew. He goes, oh Barnaby, where are you? You can't escape. I know where you are. <laughs> I was dying laughing when I saw that. It was incredible. It was just. You can't escape me, Barnaby. And then the kid goes, So that's why you put that shark in the pool. So that way I could get trapped in. Oh, you've got it, old. You got it. But he was playing with him. That shark, he had it as a pet. So, you know, it was so funny. You have to see this movie. It's hilarious. Kill Uncle. Some people actually would look at the title. And that's the thing about British movies and, you know, uh, foreign films. They're very strange. They have sort of like a dark atmosphere and a dark sense of humor that, you know, the title would probably kill Uncle. That, that, that must be a very bad movie. No, it's not. It's a comedy. It's sort of like a, a comedy that has sort of like, sort of like a message. So, you know, 
All right, so let's uh, continue with this one. This is something a little bit different by David Finch drawing the front view. And let me show you how he did this one. And let's turn the page. And let's start talking about Kill Uncle. So we'll start with a regular oval. Now we have the eyebrow line here, and then the nose, and then the mouth right here, then the chin right here. Okay, so we're going to divide, well not divide, slice, just a little, just like the Loomis method, except that we're actually slicing the, the oval. And this is the way I saw it from David Finch. I'm gonna to try to remember what he did here. So what he does is he does sort of like the bridge of the nose here. Does another eye line here, I think. Or I think he just works with the, uh, the eye socket. Yeah, he works with the eye socket. So he doesn't do it too close to the edge because that's gonna be part of where the cheek lines are going to be. So the next thing he does, he does, you know, hint of the nose right there. And then that's when he starts working with the cheekbones. Connecting to, of course, where the jaw is right there. Then he does the ear over here. And then the temple of the head right there, see? <clears throat> now I'm just going to do one half of the face so you can see because I want to leave this so you can see the technique over here, you know, the process that I did here. So you can see the finished drawing over here. So he starts working with the nose, like everybody else that actually starts with the nose. And the lips right there. And then the eyebrows. Then of course, I think he starts the eyes. I noticed that Finch actually starts the eyes first and then he does the eyebrows. And then I don't know why, but he usually does the cheekbones straight down like this sometimes. But then again, he gives a shape at the same time. Then right here, this whole line here helps you form where the ear line, okay, is. It'll help you form the jaw line there, right there, see? We'll do an eye right there. And right here would be the, uh, the hairline. And we'll do some hair right there. This will be the neck. Right there, okay? So I left it, you know, the process, the basic elements over here, the method, and then the finished drawing would be around here. And then, of course, this would be the hairline right here. Let's age him up a little bit. Okay, so we got that done. Okay, so let's see what we could do next now. Um, let's do, uh, instead of going on with this, I want to do, you know, kind of change a little bit of it. You know, maybe I'll start somebody else. Um, I'm going to work with now Romero's method. And this one I enjoyed a lot because I started, I had to like, you know, go back, keep, you know, going back, look from the beginning process, how we all, how he started everything. So let's do this one here. And let me show you, let's analyze this first. Okay, so he starts off with a vertical line for the center of the face. Then he does the eyebrow line, the eye line, the nose line, the mouth line, and the chin line. Now this is a little bit of way off. This is just the first process that I was doing. Maybe this one looks a little bit better. So after that, notice that he does sort of like a V shape. So let me, let me um, mark this one and two. There you go. Okay, he does um, 
the V shape. Sort of like a pyramid shape. What's amazing about all this, that I don't know how he did it, but I actually practiced it and I thought, by George, I think you've got it. Well, what he did was that once he did this whole segment, he started doing the roundness of the head. Then he did the ears over here. Then he did the other he the ear over here, even though the, the face is not complete. Only over here. He started from the ear down. He did the jaw. Then after that, he started working with the, you know, the planes and also the cheekbones and the features and all that. So I did the same technique, believe it or not, with uh, sort of like a, cart or like a cartoon funny face with the same method. Then here we have, um, I started mixing a little bit with Loomis method and I mixed it with uh, Tom Richmond, the cartoonist. And it actually, this came out pretty cool. It's sort of like a funny face by using the Loomis method. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of everything here. All right, so let's start with the center line. I'm gonna do it in pencil first, and then maybe I'll work with black pencil afterwards. Okay, the eyebrow line should be around here. Okay. Let me see. Uh, okay. So I make sure I get this right. Okay, then the eye line would be around here. Then I visualize. Because I'm gonna change it a little bit. I'm going to visualize that V shape already. The nose. Give it space, like maybe one eye down, the mouth. I'm going to pretend I see the chin on the top of the chin there, then the bottom of the chin there. And that's it. I got I don't have the whole face yet, but all I got to do now is measure this good. The V shape, sort of like a diamond shape. And if I want, I could do something like that too. That actually works. I've seen Serpino do something like this. So this would actually help me see the uh, the um, hairline right there. And then he does the forehead, the top of the head. And this is what he does, people. Okay. Now pay attention. Now the next thing he does is the shape of the head, but very lightly, because maybe it might go out of proportion. And then the ear would be around here. The other ear would be around here, okay? So now, little by little, I'm actually visualizing where my jaw is gonna be set up. Straight down to where the chin is right there, see? See how simple it is? But I wanna make sure that the placement of the features are going to fall correctly right. Okay, so now all I have to do is work with the features now. So the next thing he does he started working like always and Romero always have a habit of starting with the nose and that's fine because that's the way it should be done because that's the key focal focus of the face the nose make sure it's nice and level here level here and I'm talking about the corner of the nose and then you're gonna make a line from the corner of the nose all the way up that would be the segments for your eyes. You might want to start doing the eyebrows, a hint of the eyebrows, just to get that out of the way. And then do another line here for the center. And right here would be the end of the eye. Do another line here for the center. Then right here would be the end of the eye. You see? This thing here that I did, these three segments, it actually helps me see the eye better and everything level. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the eye. I gotta remember the tear duct. 
I'm not going to worry about too much of that dot in the center. I could always erase that. That's why I did it a little lightly. But black pencil is hard to erase. It's a mission. So, so I'm going to start working little by little with the features of the face. I'm going to work with my cheekbones right here. And notice that it's coming a little bit off where that V shape is. That's the way it's supposed to be. And this would be the shape of the face right here, see? The hairline. And then what I gotta do now is work with the mouth now. And then the bottom of the lip. So see, he's looking on the side of his, the side of his eyes, you know, the corner of his eyes. I'm gonna do his eyelids. And now I'm gonna do the, um, the eyebrow, maybe this one just a little bit down. You can actually do faces that are not symmetry, you know, they're the same symmetry, but in from your head, you just gotta actually use your head, visual, you know, visualize it, train your eye to see, well, maybe this eye might look a little bit different from this eye, because not all faces look the same, especially when it comes to a front view. Maybe the eyelid might be a little bit down, maybe the eyelid might be a little bit rounder and, uh, who explains that even better? Romero, the master. He actually explained it yesterday on his um, last video. I think it was yesterday. No, I think it was, um, no, no, not yesterday. It was, um, I think it was last week. I just, I can't remember because he's got so many videos. Then I'm going to actually fix the chin. Notice that the face is actually taking form, see? And then I'm gonna visualize the corner of the mouth, right there, here we have the cheekbone, and then we got the ears. We'll do the other ear over here, and then we'll do the hair coming out this way. And I'll do the shape. Now oh, it's getting hot here, hold on a second. It's getting hot. Okay, so now we'll fix the jaw right there and fix the other jaw. Looks like that Sean Connery style face, kind of, a little bit. Like the old comic book, I don't know if you guys remember, they used to have, which I have a, a comic book, uh, Casino Royale, the first comic book of Casino Royale from way, way back. Actually, the, the story, because when they made the movie, they made it really different. So um, I got the original story to Casino Royale. It's way, way different from the movie. And I used to have the book, but since I've been moving so many times, oh my God, you'll be surprised all these science fiction books I had, especially adventure spy books. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. So let's try a woman with this, uh, yeah, let's try, maybe we could use the backside here. But let's try a woman. Give me a minute, guys. I want to check my door. I'll be back.
I also got to watch the mail because uh, Romero promised me he was going to send me some more of his sketches. And when I get it, I'm going to actually dedicate a video on him of all his sketches. I already showed you half of the stuff that he sent me, but he's got more stuff he's going to send me. Hopefully that'll come today or tomorrow because he sent it last week. So it should be coming this week. Okay, so let's do the woman now with the same method. Okay, so this time we're going to work with the... No, no, let's, let's work because I don't want to make a mistake with this. Let's work with the pencil first. So this time the eye level is going to be a little closer there. And nose. Because I can actually do a triangle too for the nose. That'll help me indicate where the nose is going to be, the mouth, then the chin. Then all I gotta do is see it as three parts. One, two, three. See, same length. So far, so good. So now, all I gotta do is visualize that V shape. Train my eye to see these shapes. So that's what you gotta do. You gotta train your eye to see the planes, because you're working with the center now. You're just working with the center, the horizontal line. So you gotta train your eye to see the shapes. And right here would be the hairline right there. So we are going to do a woman and let's make her pretty. Let's see if this method actually works to draw beautiful women. So I'm going to do a hint of the lip. I'm not going to finish the length yet. And then let me see what I'm going to do here. Corner of the nose. I did a small triangle for the woman's nose. Usually women's are very, the noses are very Nordic, very small. Okay, so this is going to be her cheek lines, but I don't worry about that now. I'm gonna work with her head. Now I'm gonna do her ears. And then her other ear right here. So I'm gonna visualize visual effect. I'm gonna see her face start taking form. And of course, women's chin is a little smaller than the man's chin. So we wanna make sure we get that correct. This would be the shape of her face right here. Now I could um, do her eyebrow. I could do that V-shape, that usual V-shape I use to make the eyebrows arch a little higher. And um, right here, I'm gonna do the corner of her eyes, which the tear duct will go here. Then visualize another line, center line. And then do the corner right there on the other side of the eye. So carefully, I gotta measure this really good. That it looks even on both sides. Let's shape her face better. So, so far, it's coming out pretty good. And let's work with the nose now. cheek lines will go out this way. Well, so far so good. And let's work with her eyes.
Okay, not bad. So far, so good. So I'm gonna erase these, but then it's gonna look like a man, so I'm gonna erase some of these lines here. I should have did it in pencil first, because it's so hard to erase black pencil. But I like uh, to do my illustrations in black pencil sometimes, you know, so. But it's very hard to erase it. So our head is around here. Let's fix this here a little bit. Do little outlines, little light outlines. That way I can figure out where her hair is actually going to be placed at. Let's make her neck a little bit longer. These eyes are going to be looking at us, so, so I'm going to do little tiny vertical lines to do her beautiful iris, her beautiful round iris. That's, that's, that's coming out pretty good. I just wish this pencil was bigger because I don't like work, to work with small pencils. Gives me a better grip, but it's getting smaller and smaller, this pencil. Okay, so now I could erase all these construction lines. Some of it I can't because it's actually done in black. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. Okay, so the technique actually works out. Now all I gotta do is uh, add some more details on her. Just um, make it simple. You know, maybe with some cast shadow. So I'm gonna do some cast shadow on her hair from the roots of her hair, of course, and then her ears will be here, of course. I'm gonna dark that in because of the shade, the cast shadow, right here in where the neck area is and right behind where the jaw is is dark so i gotta make that dark i think i kind of messed up here there you go let me make sure i get that correct dark over here darker Now the reason why I'm working with the hair first, because it's going to actually help me find all these three dimensional dark tones and the cast shadow in her face. So I want to work with the hair first. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Work with her beautiful hair.
Yeah, you guys gotta watch that movie, Kill Uncle with Norman Green and some other great actors in that movie. It's a very funny movie in a way. Dark, you know. I loved it. I think I'm gonna watch it again tonight before I go to work. It's a very good movie. It just movies like that you don't see anymore. Okay, underneath the neck is dark. Then around with her eyes are right here. Right here is dark. In between right here. Underneath the nose is dark, of course. And I always got to remember the iris is a little bit dark because of the eyelashes. Remember I explained before that since the eyelashes are coming more forward, the rest of the features like the eyes and everything in the iris is going to be a lot of shade. And underneath the eyebrows, there's a lot of shade also. Also underneath the eyes, also there's some shading and some cast shadow. Cast shadow. We must learn to do the cast shadows. Right there. So far, so good. So yeah, this is a very good way in drawing faces the way Romero did it. Now, I'm not too sure if he got this from Loomis, or it could have been that he... I, I have a feeling that Romero is just like me. He sort of takes one method and kind of combines it with another one. It's sort of like a, a different process. I'm willing to bet you that he probably got this method from Walter Foster, which um, I, I'm going to do sooner or later a video on Walter Foster. And we're going to actually analyze his book again because it's always good to like if I if, okay if I do a video on a book I'll probably do it two times only and if it's a book I really love a lot maybe three times like I'll probably end up doing um, Walter Foster probably the third time probably or maybe three times because so far I you know I just did it once I think and there was two books of Walter Foster so might have been that I did it probably uh, two times already so this probably be my third time doing the Walter Foster book but it really you know it doesn't matter because the key point to all these people is to keep not only practicing but reviewing the book again. And I know many of you guys don't have many of these books. Unfortunately, probably maybe half of you guys might have some of the books that I have. But it's always good to review the book again. And if I have to like, you know, slowly turn the pages so that way you can understand it a little bit better, I'm there, trust me. Because I know how it is, you know, as a starter, as a beginner, it's very hard, you know, it's like, I was there, trust me, and I had nobody to show me, so I've actually taught myself, of course, by looking at books and collecting books, and then at the same time, later on came the internet, and, uh, and you know what I used to do sometimes in the bookstores? I would get a pad and paper, and if I see something I like, a technique from a book, I would just take notes of it. That's it. From these art books. I would do that in either in the library or in the bookstores. And uh, sometimes I, there were times I couldn't afford. I would buy like maybe two books or one book. But there was other books that I liked, so what I did was I, I was actually take notes of it. You know what I mean? And uh, nowadays, if you want, you can just take a picture of the techniques 
from the books and then study from there. But if you're an artist, you could just actually take notes like I do. And that's what I used to do, believe it or not. When I used to visit book in store and at the same time Barnes and Nobles, I would actually take notes down. Get my pad and paper, pencil, and start learning all the milk and crannies of all the techniques that are there for people to learn. Because unfortunately, these books, they cost a lot. They really are expensive. In those days back, yeah. And I remember there were times I didn't have the, you know, either the gift card or the uh, membership card. But when I started getting the membership card, then I started, how do you call it, um, getting more books for like maybe I would say 50% off, you know. Okay, so that came out pretty good. Um, I kind of like the way it came out. All right, so let's go on with David Finch. Uh, let me see. Let me uh, let's practice. Th yeah, let's practice this this method right here. Yeah, let's not go too fast, people. So because we got time, trust me. And I want you guys to uh, actually learn this. And if I have to teach you guys or show you, because I'm not really a professional teacher, but to show you, I would say. Uh, if I have to show you this slowly, I will. The professional teachers are Abdon J. Romero and David Finch and Robert Marzulu. And the great Andrew Loomis. And the great Hogarth. And the great George Bridgman. Oh, if I left anybody out, just let me know. Okay, so what I'm going to do is sort of like the Tom Richmond uh, method. And Tom Richmond, uh, he draws his cartoon and funny faces. So like with a small nose right like that, here will be the eyes right there. Then the mouth would be around here. So you will do a wacky smile. And uh, and we'll do the shape of the forehead here. And then that's it. We start making a wacky, big, sort of like a, uh, a potato shape head. Like that, see? And uh, let's make some features on him. Maybe we could add some big, big glasses. Big, big glasses like that. Let's make sure we capture and then we'll do his nose. And some frowning on top of his head. We'll do the eyes. looking on his side and we'll thicken the glasses a little bit so let's do this in black pencil we'll do his eyebrows there you go dee -dee 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 -dee. let's thicken the glasses over here also I got an idea there and we'll do change the mouth just a little bit There you go. 
else. Let me just erase this pencil here. I don't want to get confused. of the glasses and then we could do some hair this came out so yeah it's coming out pretty good he's got big ears big cartoon ears Okay, I'm not going to go with too much details. I just want to show you how it's done, especially when you're doing cartoons using the Loomis method. And like I said, I kind of use two process here, Tom Richmond and Loomis at the same time. This is another good one here that's uh, actually practical. It actually works out, so let's give it a shot. And this one is by another artist, which I forgot his name. Um... But I've seen Romero do stuff like this too, believe it or not. Do the regular circle, vertical line, for the center of the face, and right around here would be my eyebrow line, and my eye line. Then my nose line should be around here. And then a hint of my mouth right there. Then the chin. So this one, what we're gonna do is, and we gotta carefully see if the proportions are correct. We might wanna bring the eye line a little lower because the eye's gonna set on top. So let's erase this here. Let's bring it a little lower there, there you go. Okay, so now we're gonna actually visualize a nose, so like an eye width nose. So you can actually do an oval for that eye if you want. That would be my nose. Then I'm gonna go up, bridge of the nose. After that, a hint of the eyebrows, a hint of the eyebrow here, then, I'm gonna work with the eyes. But before I work with the eyes, I wanna start refining the nose a little bit. Refine the nose, and then after that, you can work with the eyes up from the corner of the nose, of course, and do the same thing I did before, a line in the center, because that's gonna actually help me find the balance of the other side of the eye. Right there, see? that right there uh oh now the dog is gonna start barking because when there's people in the front talking loud the dog is gonna bark okay so we got this now so after that we do we visualize we could you know slice a bit like that we could slice a bit very lightly that you can hardly see it. And then you're gonna just see more of the jaw shape. That's it, that's all you gotta do. Bring it down. Do the ears if you want. It's 
straight down. <coughs> and that would be the chin right there, see? Now, this kind of reminds me how Romero would draw the face sometimes because he starts in the center, then he works his way out. Hairline would be around here. And that's it. All you got to do is work with the eyes. Make sure it's nice and level on both sides. start working with the lips is darker make this darker make this darker let's bring the bridge of the nose just a little down and this the eyebrow just a little down Beautiful, pretty lips, pretty petite lips. Look at these pretty, and she's looking like either suspicious or she's looking at a guy who knows. Look at the eyebrow right there. So I'm going to work again with the shape of her face, of course. this taper in just a little look with her ears fix her there's a great video <clears throat> that you got to see by Romero he drew uh, Vampiria and I think it's in my library I actually downloaded it and I actually shared it on my channel I even asked him that, so I, you know, I asked him for permission, and I also asked him permission that, that if I can post some of his cool pictures, the only problem is that half of his pictures, his drawings are in the nude, because he make it seem so realistic, so I'm afraid of posting that on Facebook, so what I'm going to do is I will probably post better the, um, the, the process, the techniques, and there's a lot in that, in the box, you know, in the mail that he sends me, uh, when he sent me the, his drawings, his sketches, there's a lot that's uh, nudity and there's a lot of uh, techniques also. So I might consider, um, let's see what happens. It's just, you know, I have this fear that, and I, I just get tired of being um, punished by Facebook. And they punish me for any stupid little thing, especially if you do a, a comment and you don't mean bad, you just mean well, but you know, it is what it is. So Facebook, you know, they're a joke sometimes. They they take everything too serious. So yeah, I'm gonna see if I can post some of his nude artwork on Facebook because he is, he's amazing. You know, Romero is amazing and he is, all his drawings are amazing. So let's see what happens, you know. But Facebook is just getting to be a pain. Every time I notice they're always giving me something like some of the music that I post. And these are groups that <laughs> they don't even exist anymore for crying out loud. 
and uh, it's just it's unbelievable they actually tell me oh no that copyright your video is being blocked certain countries cannot see it this and that whatever oh lord it's just incredible it's just it never they never give up you know so so um it's just you gotta know what to do especially when you post stuff you know so yeah this came out pretty good so i'm not gonna finish the whole thing i'm just giving you an idea how this actually works just by working with the center and this you know pretty much and i'm actually going to take a picture of this and post it on youtube and on facebook so you can actually study the way i did this so let me just finish your ears a bit you know um i might do something with this i don't know yet let's see what happens maybe create some type of character with this or just make her look classic Maybe a beret on her. Yeah, let's, you know what? Let's do a beret on her. Mademoiselle, you are looking stunning today, Mademoiselle. Oh, thank you. Look at those French hats. Did you know that these hats, these Frenchy hats, they actually came from an origin which they actually live in Spain also. They're called the Basque people. And the Basque people are the ones that, uh, in Spanish, is called La Boina. And then in France, they're called the Beret. So, yeah, they're the ones that actually made the hat, which, is, um, which are the Basque people. Half a million of them populated in Spain, and half a million of them stayed in France. If you want to know anything about the Basque people, I have plenty of documentary um on the bass people on my uh, library you'll be surprised what i have in my library a lot of interesting stuff trust me history is fascinating i also have history of the russians the ukrainians history of uh, belgium history of spain definitely um, because that's my origin of country. And then at the same time, I have histories of South America, documentaries of South America. Yeah, I love history. Several topics I love is astronomy and history. Mysteries of what's out there. Are we alone? Even though I'm atheist, but I still sort of like skeptic sometimes, you know, it's like it's, you just got to, let me tell you something. A lot of people think um, atheist uh, is something like um, that we're actually, I don't know, devil worshippers or whatever. But actually, you know, atheist people, they want to make the world better it's more than religious people because religious people, they take everything so serious that they actually want the holy war to happen and stuff. So. And atheist people uh, like me, I want to know if something really does exist. It's like, I, you know, I could be atheist, but at the same time, I want to, you know, I want to have proof. And so far, I haven't seen one proof whatsoever that there is some type of God that exists or a loving God. Especially when you see a lot of children and illnesses in this world that just does not make any sense, people. So, you know, um, it is what it is. So yeah, she's she's coming out really beautiful. I love those French names like Francesca and, and all these um The only problem with this pencil is that it smudges. Oh my God, it just smudges. Look at that. It just smudges a lot. So I gotta really be careful with the smudging here. So yeah, she came out beautiful. Look at that. Okay, so that's one of the techniques. Uh, so let's do something else that, um, that we might need some practice on. Let's see. Um, 
Okay, let's do this one again. And uh, this is also by Romero. And it's, again, starting with the center. And this would be, whoa, I don't want to make a mistake here. And here we go with the eyebrow line. <coughs> visualize the eye line. Then we visualize the nose right here. Then we visualize the mouth. And then we visualize the chin right here. Okay, so it looks good. Well, it's not done yet, but it looks good the way I actually planned it out. Because this is actually a plan here, people. So what do I do? What do I do? Let me see. Let me see if I can remember how Romero did this. Oh, yeah. We'll start working with this side of the face here first. And then the forehead, which is the outline of the forehead. So at the same time, we're going to work with this side of the face here. Okay. And then we do the forehead right here. Then we're going to cut here, but that's going to be the hairline right there. So, <clears throat> we already did the nose. And that's the first thing. When you do this segment here, always start with the nose first and then do this and do this and do that. But we did a nose already, so all we have to do is refine the nose a bit. Give it shape. It might be crooked, it might be a Nordic nose, a crooked nose, whatever, you know, just try to be creative. So I'm going to visualize over here an oval shape to do the muzzle of the mouth. That'll give me a, a great direction where that mouth is going to be, and it's not going to come out too far out. So this whole thing here, if I want, do a triangle shape all the way down, straight down. Let me turn on the AC now. It's getting hot. Hold on a second. Well, hopefully you'll turn on and turn off because this air conditioning is, it works. It acts, has its own mind. It's like, it's just ridiculous. So hopefully it'll cool the house a little bit. All right, going back to this drawing again. So the nose right here, I do a triangle straight down, right? So this would be the mouth. Right here, the bottom of the lip. We got the chin right there. So... All we have to do is, you know, start. Oh man, I messed up there. There you go. I don't know how the hell I did that. Okay, so, all right. Let's work with the eyes. Let's work with this eye first. At the same time, if you want, Start working with the contour and then do the eye. Yeah, that's it's just better like that. Yeah. Do the contour of the shape of the face of the head. And remember, this is going to actually form more head back here. Now let's see if I'm doing this right. So right here would be the other eye. I count like three eyes width, three eyes width, right? And we'll start doing the same shape that Romero actually uses. Like that. And we got, there you go. And then we have the eyebrows right there. And we do the rest of the mouth. So I think I exaggerated too much this eye. But then for, don't forget that this eye is going to seem to look a little bigger, wider than this eye because it's a three-quarter view. So let's fix this one a little bit better here. Okay, that's better now. That's better, better, better. It's getting better all the time. 
I don't think you guys remember that song by the Beatles. It's getting better all the time. I can't even remember. Half of the lyrics are all the Beatles songs I used to love way, way back. Before, and I have a book of the Beatles that actually have all the uh, Beatles songs, the lyrics. It's getting better all the time. I might consider drawing the Beatles one day, all four of them. The Fabulous Four. So it's coming out pretty good. Not bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad at all, little chap, not bad. It's getting better all the time. And of course the hairline goes this way. But first we want to make sure, you know, we find that that part of the jaw that goes up this way because this this process is not easy because you got to figure out the rest of the face so what do we do so let's use the pencil better and we'll start shading because this is a good process you shade in the shape of the rest of the face so the jaw would be around here you got to make sure that this line is where the jaw ends right here so the jaw would be around here and the ear line around here see so you could shade in you know or scribble half of the face and scribble over here too just to get that shape that you need it actually helps out we got the ears it's getting better all the time da -da 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 -da. Oh, if only there were bands like the Beatles, like before. Those great, great songs that really meant something. Well, some of the songs of the Beatles were a little bit psychedelic, but they, they did have a nice, beautiful harmony and stuff, so. Like, All you need is love. All you need is love. Love is all you need. I guess if they would make like a double song of John Lennon, they should actually play All You Need Is Love and Imagine. That would be perfect. So the whole world could listen to two beautiful songs that it's all about peace and love. Make love, not war, guys. All you need is love. Love is all you need. Okay. There's just something very wrong here. Maybe it's a little bit off. I don't know. But I think it's back of the head. I think that's messed up. Yeah. That's what it is. The back of the head. Because, of course, we started working with the um, just the center of the face. And then we started working with the whole shape. Now, this takes a lot of practice to do. So, if you want, you could, you know, actually work better with the um, the circle method. And the circle method is uh, you can actually use the same process with the circle method. You see, like over here. So let's try because I actually practiced this today uh, when I had a chance to do that one. So let's let's do that one. Let me see if I can remember. See with the circle method. Everything actually start taking form and it's more better. So here would be the center, which is the eyebrow line. 
which falls in the center of the circle. This would be the nose. And this would be the hairline. And this would be the chin. And remember, it's three parts. All right. So we visualize where the center line, the vertical line, is going to be at. We have this right here. Now we can start with the nose, just like the other one, just like that. It's the same process, except that you're using the circle. So we're going to work with the nose. The nose right there. And then we'll do, we'll slice over here, of course, because this part has to be sliced. And then we'll work with the cheek line over here and then this other cheek line over here and then we'll work with the planes of the head right here and the chin so you can actually visualize the eye socket right here and you can visualize the other eye socket here And this whole circle is going to actually help you vision the ear line. Right there, see? You want to probably want to make the mouth here first before you start with the jaw. That'll give you a better perspective of what you're doing here. Okay, yeah. Okay, now we can finish this. Let's make him... Try to create something with this. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, this this actually works out, believe it or not. Yeah. Boy, George, I think you've got it, old chap. It's good. Yeah. This really works, yeah. And this is what I mean. You gotta practice new things, new techniques and new methods and you know you gotta practice uh say, you know, the Loomis method. You can do it so many ways. Look how good this came out. And I gotta remember the length of the mouth, of course, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I don't wanna mess that up. Length of the mouth. Yes, you must be a scientist to become an artist. Don't mind me, guys. I get weird when I get my drawings that look okay, so <laughs> and I'm just playing around anyway. I don't want you guys to think I'm crazy. So it kind of looks like a skull in a way, but you're forming it into more of a human being head. So like a regular face head. And let me see if I can remember something from David Finch I learned that he did an awesome, awesome um, tutorial on drawing necks, which you can actually see it on his channel, drawing necks. It's amazing the way he does the necks. I was really impressed. But I need a lot of practice drawing necks. And that's not easy, drawing necks. So yeah, I'm gonna put a heart on this one. Hold on. That this is really good. 
I usually put hearts or stars on the on the techniques that that might be improving. I want to make sure the level of the eye is correct. Yep, it's like magic, people. Once you start practicing this, you will get good. Trust me, you should try this out. This really works. I think I exaggerated a little bit over here, of course. And uh, like always, the black pencil is kind of hard to erase. It's a real mission. Erasing black pencil. Okay, that came out pretty cool. Okay, so let's uh, work with. Um, let's see. Let's uh, study this for a second. Oh, oh yeah. This is the one that I was telling you about. Vampiria. He did an awesome drawing of Vampiria. Fantastic. Okay. Let's set this up. Okay, I'm gonna try to remember how we did it. We did an awesome drawing of Vampiria. And I'm gonna to try to remember how Vampiria looks like. Or maybe I'll just draw another woman or something, something different. So I remember that Romero explains that the center of the uh, circle is the horizontal line, of course, but it kind of like curves. And the reason why he said that is because of the way Vampiria's face was made. And then her eye level would be around here. So the eye is going to fall on top of this line. And then he mentioned, which I could remember, let me see if I can remember, that the nose is not usually like the Loomis method, like near the circle, it's a little higher. And then the lips, he did kind of like an oval image for the lips, and that's what Romero did. After that, he did the chin line on here on this. Let's measure this good. Right around there someplace. So Romero explains that you slice off a little bit over here and a little bit over here. You're slicing the circle and this is what what it's telling you what he's saying is that when you're slicing the circle of course like I mentioned many times that you're actually doing the shape of the face. So the head should look like an oval that's what he says. Make sure that her face looks like an oval. <coughs> Excuse me. So the next thing he does, um, of course, the eyes, the eye width is in the center. But he explains that drawing her face was a little bit different. So say her eye, the, the center eye is here. But the width of her eye would be around here. Okay, a little bit, you know, a little bit bigger than this eyeball here. And then, you know, you could do that line if you want to do the center of the eye, because that gives you a better understanding the level of the eye, so you could do that, okay? So what he does is he does the eye I don't know if I'm doing this right. Let's just do it the way he actually shows us in his video. But we'll get this. Now he does, he doesn't do the bridge of the nose. And this one is a little bit different because what he does is he does, he starts working with the, the eyebrows. I'm going to make this one a little higher. Okay. Then he goes down. 
and he works with the nostrils first. That's what I think he did. He worked with the nostrils first, and then he did the corner of the nose, and then right there, the plane on top of where the nostrils are to form that nose. I think that's what he did. Now he did the bridge of the nose. That's what he did. Then slowly, he did, the, her hair is banging down because she looks like kind of like, I would say, Betty Page a little bit. Vampiria, the drawing that he did. So the hair is banging down a little bit. So then we got to remember the shape of her head, okay? So we want to actually visualize the shape of her head. And then we got to remember where, how the hair is going to look. So in a way, you're picturing something like Betty Page. A little bit like Betty Page. I don't know if anybody loves Betty, but I love her. I think she's hot. Betty Page. Okay, so... Then we do the rest of her hair. I think uh, what he does, he does the ears right here. And then he starts working, of course, with the, the shape of the face. He gives it more shape. Tapers in just a little bit, just to get that, you know, that shape. Visualize that. Remember that the, the, there's an eye there. And, of course, so you're going to have to bring this a little bit inward just to get that shape. Yes. Okay, I got it now. Because remember, you have to visualize an eye here, another eye here to get the shape of the face correctly done. So let's work, let's work with their lips. So yeah, she looked at kind of like uh, Vampiria and Betty Page at the same time. I'm gonna ask him if he could do a, a drawing of Betty Page. That'll be awesome. Maybe he would. I think he did a, a drawing of Betty Page um, in his, uh, on his um, Facebook page. Okay, so now there's a lot of construction lines there. So what you're going to do is you're going to erase these lines you don't need, especially up here. Erase this. Erase that. And then erase over here too, of course. You don't want that bottom of the circle to show because you want to get her face, you know, nice and clean. Try to make it nice and clean. Okay. You raise that, uh, that extra eye and this other extra eye in the center. You raise that. You raise the center line here. You raise the segments from the corner of the nose. You raise everything that you see that's construction line. Okay. So that way you can start rendering your face. A little better so so it's beginning to look like kind of like Betty Page I will guess I don't know let's see we'll see once we start working with features so I'm gonna do it in order like I did before first I'm gonna work with her beautiful mysterious eyes and I think the eyelashes is very comic book style, you know what I mean? Something like that. And I think I kind of messed up over here. Yeah. Okay. Now I could go up and work with the eyebrows. And remember, I said that when you're doing the eyebrows, you're not doing like this, you know? You don't want to do an eyebrow like this. You want to make sure you do a line like this very lightly. And then just do the hairs like that. Little by little, you're doing the hairs slowly until you get a nice shapely eyebrow. And remember that women's eyebrows are very, very feminine and very thin. Okay. Okay, so now let's work with her bridge of her nose. And we'll work with the corner of the nose. I should have worked with the nostrils first and then work with the corner. Well, it doesn't matter. 
I already have the shape done anyway, so. Now I'm gonna work with her lips. Sensuous, beautiful lips. Okay, so now I'm gonna work with the shape of her face, but very carefully, I gotta actually see where that ch those cheek lines are going, okay? I gotta actually see those cheek lines and then taper in just a little bit over here, but I wanna make her face a little bit round and smooth, you know? really really take my time just like Romero does I don't want to draw too fast even though I know it's already and I gotta go to sleep it's oh my lord it's already 12 o'clock wow yeah I gotta go to sleep soon I gotta crash okay I'm not gonna finish all of this what I'm gonna do is that I will finish it, but not on video. I will finish this, trust me. I'm gonna make this better. I might make her like maybe Cleopatra, I don't know. I might do that, who knows. Uh, let's see what comes out of this. But I gotta admit, this came out excellent, especially using that Vampiria method that he used. It's very simple, guys. You really gotta look at his videos and I really recommend you guys to take notes when you look at his videos. I know I keep repeating myself, but, you know, if I have to repeat myself a hundred times, I will do it. Because that's the only way you're going to learn. And uh, it's always good to take notes of everything that you learn. Whether it's playing the guitar, if you come out with a song write it down i remember when i used to play the guitar i would actually write down notes uh, even though i didn't know how to play the guitar but i would actually where the notes were where i pressed the fingers at like the uh, i forgot how you call that but the segments i would say segments playing the guitar so i would actually take notes down and write it down i would make my own music notes and uh and I actually played, I, I play the guitar by ear. I don't, I don't know how to read or write music. I just play by ear and create my own style of music and stuff. So I was really, really creative. I had an electric guitar way, way back. Um, but it's a long story how I lost it. I don't even want to talk about it because it's just, it's ridiculous. Um... But you'd be surprised, you know, you learn something and you just uh, dot it down. You, you know, take notes of it. Okay, now I'm going to work with her pretty. First, I want to do it in pencil in case I mess up. Do her pretty eyelids right there. And, of course, this eyelid is going up because of this eyebrow here. And I'm going to shade that in, of course. Shade this here underneath right here. Her lips. Well, you know what? It's almost finished the drawing, if anything. Except the hair, though. So, yeah. I could uh, actually do this better now. It's round. And then, of course, is cast shadow underneath the nose. Right here. Right here. A little bit where the hair is. And since she's black here, I'm going to make some highlights. Sort of like uh, you leave some part of the hair lighter. So you do something like this. Which is sort of like a zigzag. Something like I've seen that done a lot by a lot of cartoonists. But I gotta be careful, I don't wanna make her look like the Bride of Frankenstein. That'll be a no-no.
Okay, before I work with her eyes, the iris with the eyes, I want to actually finish her hair. But I got to finish something here, which is her jaw and her chin doesn't look so right. So I want to make sure that that chin is correct. And now we darkened underneath of the neck. Go back and work with the bridge of the nose. I'm trying to talk German here now. <laughs> Been watching too many movies. Okay, now I'm going to color underneath the bangs of her hair. Right here, color here. Just make her look dark hair jet black hair I guess it's right there okay it looks like my this my notification is telling me the battery is going oh that's the bad thing when I'm doing videos is that the battery does not last long okay you have an idea what I did here. So I'm going to finish this and actually post it later on. So anyway, guys, this is it. So good luck with your drawings. I will do some more cool stuff and more methods. And I still got to show you that book uh, that I haven't even showed you yet, which is, uh, well, actually these two books. No, this one and this one afterwards. So anyway, good luck with your artwork and keep practicing. It's been fun.